Hello, fighter survivors and thrivers. Welcome to The Cancer Show. My name is Allison Lavina Phelan, and I'm a stage three colon cancer fighter, survivor, and thriver. Dr. Amin Merhadi specializes in radiation oncology at Cedar Sidey Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. And I was lucky enough to have Dr. Merhadi treat, shrink, and manage my cancer. He is not only an exceptional doctor, but he is also an amazing human being. Dr. Merhadi genuinely cares about his patients, goes above and beyond to make sure you feel as comfortable as possible, and he will even make you laugh through your tears. Please enjoy this highly informative interview with Dr. Merhadi, filmed on a very rare windy day in West Hollywood. Thank you, Dr. Merhadi, for taking such great care of me, for saving my life, and for being such a beautiful person. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Hi, I'm Allison Phelan Egan, and we are here today with Dr. Amin Murhadi of Cedar Sinai Medical Center. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for coming here today. Of course, my pleasure. Let's start with the big question: What is cancer? Well, I think one of the most the most difficult aspect of my job, by far, is trying to explain to people exactly what cancer is. Cancer is about as broad of a definition as you can imagine. It basically just means you have cells in your body that are normal that have lost the ability to stop growing and replicating and dividing. So they can't stop that, so they keep going through the process. However, there are circum many, many circumstances where that's not a big deal, like if someone has certain types of skin cancer. And then there's many circumstances where there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And the truth lies somewhere in the middle, you know? And I think, so, so by definition, if you're a purist, cancer is just a, a normal cell's inability to stop replicating. Why do you think it's so hard to cure cancer? because it comes in so many different shapes, permutations, and combinations. You know, you'll have certain types of tumor cells that might be susceptible to radiation or chemotherapy or, you know, targeted therapy, uh, and you might uh, kill off those tumor cells with those types of therapy, but then you might have um, certain ones that are left over that are resistant to these particular therapies, and those are the ones that might fester around for months or even years until they start regrowing, and then there's really no therapies for them because there are these super cancer cells that are essentially resistant to everything. You know, the, a lot of people don't understand your tumor cells are are biological organisms you know they mm -hmm. they have just like human beings just mm -hmm. like other organisms have the ability to evolve and adapt to their environment and you know develop resistance to to anything that's trying to kill it and they're they're no different than than us you know they're just organisms trying to survive so they're like a life form of their own they are exactly a life form of their own yep so we don't we don't like them <laughs> so that, that's for sure <laughs> So you are a radiologist. I, I'm a radiation oncologist. So a radiologist is someone who interprets x-rays and CAT scans and MRIs. A radiation oncologist is someone who utilizes radiation in its vast number of varying forms to treat cancer cells. So what exactly does that mean? So what that means is, for example, if you have prostate cancer, which you don't obviously, <laughs> but if you had prostate cancer, you can deliver very focused radiation in any of a number of different forms, and that radiation causes damage to the DNA of the tumor cells, and it causes th that particular cell to lose its ability to replicate and divide. And it kind of does the same, the radiation can do the same thing to normal cells as well, but normal cells are inherently different in the sense that they're not going through the replication process as quickly, so they can fix that DNA damage and they don't get quite as damaged as the tumor cells would. So that's what a radiation oncologist does. What exactly, there's all different kinds of radiation. What is the type of radiation we use to fight cancer cells? Um, there's, it depends on where the cancer is. For okay. example, if you have a brain tumor, which that's a lot of what I do, if you have a brain tumor, you l utilize a technique called gamma knife radio surgery, uh, where you do uh, very focused, precise uh, cobalt radiation that pinpoints just to exactly where the tumor is. Um, if you do, if you have uh, breast cancer, you might use intraoperative radiation therapy, you might use IMRT, you know, there's a lot of different combinations that are, that are utilized in that setting, so. For the people that have not 
um, experienced this and may be about to go through uh, their first treatment, can you just explain briefly what that's like? Because I remember my first time, I mean, it was interesting, but you know, it's a little daunting. Like what, what, you get used to it after yeah. a while, but like your first appointment after they measure you and they do that and you go to actually get the radiation, can you just take us through that for a second? Well, 80% of the anxiety is just associated with the unknown. All you hear is radiation and cancer and, and people just feel compelled, you know, to, to freak out yeah. as I would if yeah. I didn't, you know, study it for 20 yeah. years. But, um, the, you know, w the, the process involves, you know, you have to get set up and mapped out for the yeah. treatment. A and then you know, we have to, as radiation oncologists, we have to make sure we're targeting the area properly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the good news is the side effects are usually very minimal um, for, 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 for radiation uh, therapy, depending on what Where area you're treating <laughs> and what the circumstances, <laughs> they can be, for the most part, very minimal. Uh, but then again, you know, the, the outcomes can vary depending on what type of tumor you have. But for the most part, most of people's anxiety is just associated with not knowing what to expect. I remember the first time when I, I came down and it's underground mm -hmm. and you go and you lay down on a bed. You think it's like a massage bed, it's very hard. And then they line you up perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then there's a laser beam yep. and then this huge machine comes over yeah. you. Yeah. And then they tell you to hold your breath and I'm just praying the whole time. Like I'm going through my mantra. and. Actually, by the end of it, it was like, I don't even use the gown anymore. I just like walk in, take my belt off or my jewelry, lay down. They do, I'd be in and out by 15 minutes. So yeah. I did, you know, not get used to it. Yeah. I did um, six weeks consecutively, except for weekends, because you say that cancer does what on the weekends? It doesn't grow on the weekends. <laughs> I remember you saying that to me. I'm like, oh, good. Well, I'm clear there. Um, but why, why is it sometimes that you do chemotherapy with radiation and sometimes you don't? Well, that's a good question. So a lot of times, you know, there's clinical data to show that the combination therapy is, of the two together is better. But for example, uh, in the case of like colon cancer, for example, um, you know, you have certain types of tumor cells within your tumor that are sensitive to radiation and certain types that are sensitive to chemo. So if you just give radiation, you might leave behind a few cells that are resistant to, to, radi you know, to, to radiation, and if you do the opposite, you'll have the same problem. So the combination of both, then you're targeting both types of cells at the same time, and you really leave nothing to, to grow back. I like that idea. <laughs> is, there, is there one cancer that is easy, easier treated with um, radiation than another? Oh, there's plenty of them. Uh, believe it or not, brain tumors are the most easily treated things with radiation. You know? Really? Well, you have to think about it. If you have a tumor in the center of someone's skull, you have to dig through a lot of stuff to get there. But the radiation can kind of travel through there pretty easily. So, so radiation is replacing a lot of you know, types of brain surgery because it's you know, obviously much less side effects with almost the same effectiveness. Wow, that's good. That's positive. What about um, cancers that... Are there any that cannot be treated with radiation? Um, you give anything enough radiation and you'll kill it. <laughs> you know, but, but that's something that obviously you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But there are a lot of types of tumors like melanoma, right. um, like some types of colon cancer that are better treated with other forms of therapy. Leukemias and lymphomas, obviously, right. because they're very diffuse. Radiation is most effective when it's a localized tumor that's easily discernible on a CAT scan or an MRI. Speaking of the baby, mm -hmm. if you do have cancer in that area and you, you need to have radiation, what are your options? I mean, what can you do to possibly preserve that, those, those reproductive parts? It's very, it's very difficult, um, and it de obviously depends where you're treating. Um, you know, we take a lot of care to outline the ovaries you know, and the uterus to try to avoid them when we can. But obviously, if someone had, let's say, uterine cancer, there's only so much you can do. So um, there are circumstances where you might have to choose between, you know, sacrificing your fertility and, you know, letting your tumor keep growing. And that's never an easy conversation to have. But, you know, sometimes you have to have it. So, What about saving your eggs or sperm? Like, can you do a that? Of, a lot of people do that, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I, you, t you gave me a 5% chance. <laughs> Thank goodness I have my children. <laughs> but for those of you that don't, I mean, there's still hope. There's definitely absolutely. hope. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, what um, would you consider, like, if, if you go in and you radiate the cancer, is that, and it's gone, is that considered the, a cure? Like, are you cured at that point? Cure is a very, very lousy definition of anything. You know, um, there's no real definition of, of cure. If someone, if someone had, you know, uh, let's say breast cancer, and you mm -hmm. gave them radiation therapy, you did surgery, then you give them chemotherapy, and then radiation, for example, and then you get a mammogram six months later, and, and there's nothing there. It's not really wise to say you're cured because that kind of implies, you know, it, implicit in that definition is, oh, I don't have to worry about anything. But that's not the case. You have to continue on getting your mammograms every six right. months you have to continue with yeah. your breast exams uh, and you have to keep monitoring it, mm -hmm. it, it it's almost I mean, it's a bad analogy but i hate to say it but it's almost like people who go to alcoholics anonymous mm -hmm. they will always say i'm an alcoholic and, and it's a bad stigma to attach to it but but you need to if someone's a cancer patient they need to understand that they there's something in their body that isn't quite right mm -hmm. and you need to stay on top of that yeah. to make sure you nip it in the bud if it happens again in the future you have to take care of your own health. Un undoubtedly. You were talking a little bit about side effects, and I'm thinking that maybe um, some, some side effects are just worse because you are taking the chemo and the radiation at the same time. What would you say is like the worst part, just you know, to, um, to let people know what the worst side effect of radiation could be? So specifically to radiation therapy is if you're, the, the, the hardest area to treat is the abdomen. You have your liver there, you have your small intestines there, your rectum there, and then a lot of people can get, you know, diarrhea, they can get no severe nausea. That's probably the worst area to treat, you know. If you're treating someone with breast cancer, well, that's just mostly skin reaction. Okay. You know, brain tumors, there's surprisingly not a lot except for some hair loss. Um, wow. But the abdomen is a tough area to treat. What would you say over the past 10 years is different about how we treated patients with radiation than before? Oh, it's night and day. It the, is? The, precision, the precision is a lot more. Well, we, uh, over the last 10 years, technology has evolved to let us track tumors. So like, rather than just delivering radiation to a broad area and hoping the tumor is somewhere in there, you focus in just the tumor and track its movement with the radiation beam. That's something that's hit the scene over the last few years that's very, very, very promising and exciting and what are we moving towards like what could make it even better so uh, different types of radiation so right now we just use good old-fashioned x-rays mm -hmm. and without getting into the science behind it and you know boring you with it so to speak <laughs> um, they're developing you know technology using heavier ions like protons and carbon ions and things like that and those have kind of better radiation dose distribution so if you combine enhanced accuracy right. motion management and better particles for radiation, you're gonna get much better outcomes down the road. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us or um, tip us off on, or anything that you've heard, <laughs> any inside secrets? No, well, just, just keep, keep your hats on because it's <laughs> gonna be a bumpy ride, and it's, it's gonna be a fun ride, and in the end, you'll come up with uh, They'll be, we'll come up with something, I promise. <laughs> I, when I started in, and, and, oh, he's the greatest doctor. He's, like, so positive and Thank so you. fun. And I always enjoyed meeting with you, even though in the beginning, like, my first two weeks, I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Third week, I'm fine, I'm fine. The fourth week, I was down. I was like, help me, somebody. So it took a while for it to catch up. That's another thing that's yeah. kind of, like, you should know is that it doesn't always hit you right away because I kept thinking, oh, I'm going to breeze through this. I'm fine. I'm fine. But it does, uh, you know, for sure. it like it grows and it gets, oh, yeah. it, you know, at, uh, and then I was bad for like another three weeks. So it kind of like split up and then I started to heal. I remember you, I'm like, how long is it going to take me to heal? And you're like three to six weeks. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Well, here you are. <laughs> here I am. I'm all healed. There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us today. And um, good luck to everybody. If you ever need a great doctor, he's right here. Thank you so much, Dr. Marotti. Thank you, Allison.